Every day at Coombs County Infant School in Arbourfield near Reading, something exciting happens. The visit by the band sums up some of the main ideas of the school. Real musicians, real experiences, an event which will remain in the memory and is a stimulus for learning. I don't think there is a typical day at Coombs. The experiences that we try to set up for the children are to enable them to learn about the broadest possible way of looking at life. All the experiences are practical, hands-on, ex real first-hand experiences, because I feel that education tends to get narrower as the children get older. We tend to do that with, with children. And we're at, luckily at this end, which is the broad end, and we want to give them as much experience in as many fields as possible. OK. I believe you know the song yeah, we... Yellow Bird? Yeah! OK, let's see if we can sing to all the birds. In providing these experiences, the school aims to use the talents of the local community to the full. The leader of the band, Captain Kevin Gruneberg lamb is a parent. We're trying to make this a community school where people who register their children feel that they're always going to be welcome, that they come in and watch us teach, or better still, work with us, and that people beyond that community who have talents come in regularly. It's very much a place where we want the adults to work with the children and to come in and make the atmosphere good for everybody. This is what it sounds like. The emphasis on valuing everybody's talents in a totally caring environment has always been pivotal to Sue's vision of how learning should take place. She's developed this vision over 25 years with her teams of dedicated and like-minded teachers. The setting and environment have also been an essential part of the school's teaching philosophy. The grounds are seen as another classroom. There's so much that you can quite naturally use that's interesting and um, means that, that you have practical experiences that it's a shame to neglect the setting. And like a good library, it's something you can always draw on. It can be pouring with rain, but there are things out there which you can gather and use, and the rain itself is something that we use. Like looking out through a window, um, misted or with raindrops running down, you get the sense of the impressionist painting. It's total, and it's very satisfying. The grounds are used for every subject across the curriculum and age groups and subject areas constantly cross over. Drama is used to teach geography and vice versa. The Chinese New Year dragon created in art and drama is now part of a geography lesson. A group of trackers using compasses trace the path of the dragon through the school grounds. Could I have my pen? So they're moving which way? Yeah. Which direction on the compass? Yeah. East. Good, that's right, they're going east. Shall we follow them, trackers? We try very much to use drama in a positive way to cover the curriculum. If you can engage the children's imagination and give them some kind of an experience on a personal level, it becomes much more exciting and much more real to them. We often go outside, obviously, and use the grounds. We use the inside very much as well, but the outside environment, our sixth classroom, if you like, is very important. And to actually enable the children to go out and to plan a route where the dragon might be and then to go out and see if they were right and then come back and plot it on a map of the school it gives it a reality instead of just saying this is a map where did we go we've actually gone and done it and looked at landmarks and looked at the compass and discussed whether the compass is agreeing with what we think it should be and that kind of learning through experience we feel stays with the children because they've actually experienced it that's right your compass says exactly the same
OK, then. So now we're inside. We want to... Back in the classroom, Jenny Buttle, vice chair of the school governors and a trained teacher, continues the lesson. You need to put the classroom on because that's where you started and where you finished. And we need to put the compass points on so that we can work out the directions in which we went. And the Grand Dragon dancing finale involves the whole school, with all their dragons, in the school hall. There's a strong emphasis on festivals and celebrations at Coombs. Today, it's Valentine's Day. And here, love is celebrated in its widest sense as part of the caring ethos. The heart symbol and theme runs through all the school's activities for the week. ..so that they lie in the grooves that were made by the ones that went before. This is a technique that Nora, a basket weaver who visits the school regularly, has taught the children. And we're trying to take it a step further this time, that instead of just making one willow wreath, each child's going to make two, and they're going to work out a way of joining them to make the top half of a heart, and then work out a way of making the pointed part at the bottom. And all this is willow and, and hedgerow material that's been gathered here in the school gardens. The gift of love is celebrated in the annual badge giving ceremony where everybody in the school receives a special heart. The heart theme and symbol even finds a place in maths. You hold it for him, Becky, then he can read it. Nine take away four equals five. The most recent research looking at maths in early years has found that a lot of children are bored by maths because it's been a lot of drill, a lot of practice, and obviously algebra and number is practice practice but if you can make it dynamic if you can make it interesting if you can make it thematic as this week's theme has been valentine's and hearts and to use a heart symbol and if you're a, a young five or six year old and you're given a card with a bright red heart on it you're naturally drawn to that whereas if you're given a card with an empty box as a symbol and you've got to think of the number to put in there then it, it can be boring it can switch you off you are very quick. How do oh, you do it, Rory? Because I know how I can count, because I know what five and four makes. So you, you, that was clever. Seven. You know if you add five and four together, it nine. makes nine. So you said that nine take away four, four must leave five. you with five. Right, let's see if you're right. What I would probably do from my next lesson on algebra, I'd look at the work that was covered this time, and it was catering for children right the way across the board. So there were children who uh, were five-year-olds just starting with simple patterning and then there were the seven-year-olds who were actually looking for rules and patterns so it's practice practice it's reinforcing the concepts you have to go along here the same as we do with the other ones but there's there's one thing that's different about this one because there's one of these missing and you have to like you have to write it down. You have to write it down, yeah. We know it says five, so we press three times and then we put down that number there. The aim at Coombs is always to make learning enjoyable and memorable. But the teachers are very aware of the requirements of the national curriculum. I think the national curriculum is both a hindrance and a help. It does direct our attention in a very focused way to certain things so that we, we have always got this eye to good balance. Um, in some regards, it's a little bit constricting that it doesn't take the ideas as far as they might be taken. I hope that doesn't obtain here. I hope that we see 
opportunities, move out towards them and capitalise on them and, and that the development um, is suggested in a way that whenever you leave an idea it's left with masses of possibilities hanging in the air because you never ever get to the end of any idea. Even information technology doesn't forget its Valentine's Day. IT Roma, a small robot, is programmed by the children to deliver hearts to specified places and distances. And later, its route is mapped out on a computer. That was pretty good, Bryony, because I'm not sure that I would have said that was 100. I'd have said that was probably nearer about 70, so well done. The school has an excellent reputation for science teaching too. Sue Humphreys and Sue Rowe, the deputy head, have written two very successful books for Key Stage 1 of the national curriculum, which aim to meet attainment targets while still preserving their vision of science Just as an exciting discovery and a living experience. Where do you think your heart is? Today, in keeping with this week's heart theme, Sue is looking at how our own hearts work. You all got a tennis ball in your hand? Yeah. Okay. Just have a go at squeezing it with one hand. No, I can squeeze it. Just so you can squeeze it so that your fingers go in a bit on it. You got a gun there. I can. And in one minute, I want you to squeeze this ball in one hand 70 times. You ready, Aaron? Yeah. It's having that curiosity of mind and of spirit of wanting to know because it's interesting for itself, of realising that you too can do it, you too can be a scientist, a true researcher. You too can apply scientific method. The young children can do it as well. The, the quality of the experience that you're giving them. So for instance, mm -hmm. recently we've just started a, a pocket of work on electricity and magnetism. And I guess in most schools when that's approached, it will be make a circuit from a battery, a couple of bits of wire, a crocodile clip or two, and a light bulb. We actually went out and got a, a plug and a screwdriver and a piece of three-core flex for every child. And we've had enormous fun working out why. Why do you need three cores? Where does the electricity come from when it comes into school? Where does it come from before then? So it's starting from simple starting points, but finding the exciting. You can see you've got a lovely aorta there. What do you think it pushes through? Blood. Blood, that's right. Every 16 seconds, one blob of blood is going right down to your toes, round and up to your heart, through your lungs and all the way back again. It's going round in a circle the whole time. And it's these tubes that help to carry. There's lots of information available about today's Open Saturday and about what we're doing in future weeks. You can get a free information pack if you phone us on 0870 900 0303 or write to us at The Open University, PO Box 625, Milton Keynes, MK7 6AA. We have an email address and a website and we're also on CFAX page 626. So, until next time, goodbye. Next week we'll be off in our flying machines investigating aircraft, flight navigation and the future of spacecrafts. What is it that keeps them up in the air and why does it all sometimes go dramatically?